Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the show on this Thursday, the 17th of March, 2022. Thank you for tuning in. I'm glad to have you guys here. Now, you know what? They got an outbreak, massive outbreak going on in China of the Omicron. The same flu-like thing that hit here in America. Everybody's had it. Everybody. I don't think any it missed anybody. Well, it's... It's so contagious, it's almost impossible to stop it anyway. But in China, you know, they're freaking out about it. And they they do the lockdown thing and everything else. Let's get in there and look and see what's going on. Let's open up the charts right here. Uh, these are the uh, confirmed cases in mainland China over the last seven days. And you can see uh, on the coastal cities like uh, Changchun and... <laughs> Long Tang and, and Shenzhen and and these coastal cities are having it the worst. The highest densely populated areas are having it the worst. And what's China doing about it? Well, they're freaking out as the outbreak worsens. Uh, so there's going to be supply chain chaos coming from China. So so essentially. Uh, this is going to add to our supply chain woes that we have over here in the West. What's going on in China right now <clears throat> Right now with their supply chain problems in, around this virus? It's going to add to the fuel to the fire of inflation. Because when you have shortages of things, uh, prices go up. Inflation's getting very much embedded in the system now and expectations for inflation. And what's the Fed doing about it right now? Well, they're doing their measly 25 basis point rate hikes, which aren't having much effect except to make the more volatility in the markets ultimately as these rate hikes start to pile up one on top of another, you know. Uh, so let's move on. Let's take a look at silver today. Uh you know, there's so many things happening out there right now in the system, including the war. We've got uh, refugees, I mean, like over 2 million suddenly just out of nowhere, boom, and heading into Poland and heading into places like Romania and places like that. Uh, this is people on the move. Uh, we've got a a uh, a polarity that's occurred between west and east that's very very bad very very dangerous for the world uh what we've got is over here in the west we've got a corrupted financial system possibly our biggest problem is all these fiat currencies that are actually worthless what's the answer going to be to all of this central bank digital currencies you see they have restrictions on and they have laws about money, money. Money has laws behind it where, you know, they have to go through all this big process in order to what they call print money, the Fed print money. They don't actually print it anymore because it's already digital, but uh, it's money. It's what they call money, and there's laws around money. Uh, but if they switch over to a central bank digital currency, it's not considered money, and it's not, these old laws don't possibly, I'm just not exactly sure what the laws would be, but I'm thinking to myself that these old laws might not apply, whereas the Fed, if they had a central bank digital currency, they might just be able to create it on any scale that they wanted to create it on, because it's not, doesn't come under the, the rules of money. If you see where I'm going with this, this is what I'm thinking. And so they could create any number of units that they want and send it to anybody that they want. And basically, problem solved, you know. Rub your hands together. Okay, we fixed it. Clap your hands, you know, together. And, oh, we fixed the problem now. <laughs> you know, um, what we've done is, is we, we've created a new type of money that's not money. So we can do whatever we want with it, and we can just send it to whoever we want in unlimited amounts. So we need more oil. 
out there, uh, well, let's do a whole bunch of startups and let's send a whole bunch of central bank digital currency to the oil producers so they can drill and everything. You know, just fund everybody. Oh, we got a problem with the people, social unrest, because they don't have enough food and whatever, and they don't have enough money. Well, not a problem. They can all have an account with the Fed, and we'll send them all a little credit card in the mail with, um, I don't know, $30,000 on it, whatever. They can just spend. They can start spending again once they get this in place. And they're going to need it. Because, but what's that going to do? Think about it for a minute. Money from heaven, money for nothing. It's going to increase the speed of inflation exponentially. And, you know, they could keep this game going for quite a while. Why I say that is by just adding zeros. Just move the decimal point around a little bit. Um, they could even take in, in the digital wallet that they have with these new central bank digital currencies. When they get up to one billion, is worth the same as what the purchasing power of one dollar is now. They could just move the decimal point and make one billion one dollar. Not a problem. Then they're right back where they started again. The dollar would have the purchasing power it did back in 1914. But it would be a billion units of the old dollars it would make one new dollar. So what would that do to your bank account if they do something like that? I mean, but doing that, they could extend this thing out for quite a long ways, you know. Now that it's digital, it's in a central bank digital currency form, they can just keep inflating it to f practically forever. I mean, they, you know... Uh, they could take that fraction. Like, basically what I'm saying, guys, is is since 1914 till now, the purchasing power has lost 98% of its value, the dollar. So we get that 2% left. That means the dollar's worth two cents of 1914 money. Okay? Dollar's worth two cents. Just keep going with that. Taking that fraction down smaller and smaller and smaller. In the end, the dollar would be worth not even a penny, maybe a billionth of a penny. And then once you get to a billionth of a penny, you could just go to a trillionth of a penny. You know, uh, I mean, it's just how long could they drag that out with a central bank digital currency? They could drag it out quite a long ways. You know, and I mean, this is where they want, but what about the control it gives them? All they'd have to do is turn your wallet off. Oh, we don't like him. Turn his wallet off. <laughs> now, where is he going to eat? <laughs> you know? I mean, they'll have that total control. And they know where you're spending every last penny. You buy a piece of bubble gum, they'll know. They'll know. And, and far as taxes are concerned, I mean, it'll, it'll solve a lot of problems there, you know? Because people won't have to do taxes anymore. It'll ought to be all automatic. And they could put a time stamp on your money. So you better get out and spend it. They could make it so it's only good for a month. They put it in your wallet for you or whatever. It's in there, right? And in the last day of the month, if you don't get it spent, then poop, it's gone. It disappears from your wallet. Too bad you didn't do it on time. That would increase spending, wouldn't it? You know, uh, get the inflation going. They wanted a 2% target, they said. Okay, we got 2% inflation target. That's what they said just a few months ago. Well, now they got it at 8% according to their metric, which is really probably about 16 to 20% by the real inflation numbers. You know, and, and it's just going to run away. Now they say, oh, well, now we want to stop it. Now we want to stop it. You can't stop that train because once it gets going, there's inflation expectations out there amongst the people. They lose confidence in the purchasing power. And they want to, in the end, they want to spend the money as quick as they get it. A good reason why, if they're losing value daily on it, and who, what fool is going to keep their money in the bank? So all that money at twenty trillion dollars that's in the U.S. banking system, and everybody's saving it. In the end, they'll start getting rid of it. It'll start chasing goods and services too. You have a flood of money. They've already printed the hyperinflation, guys. Once people just get it in their head and they realize that the money's losing value, and what's going to happen to Bitcoin, the cryptocurrencies? And, and gold and silver, when that happens, well, we're already seeing it start to ignite. 
gold and silver starting to ignite. Oh my goodness, it took an awful lot of, of to get it to move. That's because of those four big bullion banks. Anyway, getting off on a tear here. Let's take a look. 2540 for silver. It's up 35 cents on the day. Let's take a look at gold. Gold's up 1550 on the day so far. What a great place to put your money because I'm going to tell you, it's never failed. In the history of gold and silver, they have never failed to maintain their purchasing power. And fiat currencies have never failed at self-destruction, becoming worthless. So where do you want your money? You want it in the bank and fiat currency? Because fiat currencies have never, ever, 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 ever worked. They've always ended in hyperinflation. Or do you want it in gold and silver, which has never, ever, 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 ever failed to hold your purchasing power? Where do you want your money? And I'm going to tell you, it's going to be harder and harder to get gold and silver now at this point from here forward. And the price is only going to continue to go up, not down. You know? Heaven forbid if we were to get some sort of a cr really bad crash in the system. You say, well, gold price would go down. Well, the thing is, if we got a really bad crash like that in the system. The whole system would probably go down. So then, I mean, at that point, I mean, why worry about that? I mean, they've got this system so over leveraged now, and they're just going to leverage it up higher with all this new money creation. It has to happen at a certain point. Let's take a look at cryptos today. Uh, we're looking at a crypto price of 1828. So cryptos is up a little bit, 40,849. Let's take a look. Yeah, forty thousand eight hundred fourteen. So, so it's 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 moved up above forty thousand again today. Let's take a look now at the Dow Jones Industrial Average, and it is up ninety five points at thirty four thousand one hundred fifty eight. I think this market. And I told you guys about six months ago or more. I said that. I said next March. I said January, February, March, the first quarter of next year. And this was back in last year. You know, I was telling you guys. I said, we don't have our big crash by then. The door is going to shut. And I was right on the money almost to the day. Because when I told you guys that, I was right on the money. Because now it's closing. March is closing. The door is shutting on this big crash. Didn't happen. I gave it to I gave it until the end of March, first end of the first quarter of the year, January, February, and March, and now we're going to start to move into the absolutely embedded inflation that is almost impossible to stop once it really gets going, and then it just goes faster and faster. And so, what's the way out of this for the Fed? Just keep printing. Just keep adding zeros to the currency. Keep taking that fraction of what the dollar was worth. Right now it's worth two cents. Soon it'll be worth a penny. It'll be worth a, a dollar will be worth a half a penny. And then a dollar will be worth a, mil, a, a quarter of a penny. And then if they get it right down there to so the dollar's worth like a billionth of a penny in the end. And just keep adding zeros. And they can keep extending this out for quite a ways. Just keep adding more leverage. So, you got a question about real estate. Okay? I said, well, will real estate go up? Everything that's real is going to go up. And real estate is real. Real estate. <laughs> it's made, your house is made out of real sticks, stones. I don't know what your house may have. Mortar, bricks, uh, Two by fours, all that stuff is real. And it's all going to go up in price. Building materials are going to go up in price massively. So just your house is going to go up too. But your house, the housing market right now is in a bubble. That means it's overinflated for its value of what it should be worth. So 
it's going to go up to keep it's going to go up sort of to keeping up with inflation like other things right going to go up in value but it's not going to go up in value as fast as some of these other things that have been suppressed so everything is going to start to balance itself out but in a hyperinflationary way like the stock market and everything and so the bubbles that we've seen are only in relation to what the dollar is worth ultimately when the dollar starts to lose value it'll catch up with these bubbles so they're not bubbles anymore stock market's already doing this I, it's hard to explain what I'm trying to explain to you guys is but as the dollar loses value and loses purchasing power uh, this stock market right here at 34,000 which is where it's been staying for like a year it's already lost 8% of the in other words a year ago when the stock market was at 34,000 it was like the rate of inflation higher than what it is now in other words the bubble was bigger it's already hissed out about 8% or so according to their metric on inflation which is probably really about 15 or 20 percent of its value already so the air is already leaked out of it even though it hasn't went anywhere even though the price of the stock market is 34,000 say a year ago it was 34,000 it really has hissed out uh it's in it's inflation and and, and the real estate market's going to do exactly the same thing all of these bubble markets are going to do exactly the same thing and then they're going to march higher but the dollar is going to be worth that much less maybe the dollar will be worth half of what it's worth now right soon i'm talking soon and so all these markets that were overinflated and were in a bubble everybody says oh it's a bubble well the air is leaking out of them even though they're not going down because the dollar's worth less uh, it's hard to explain, but that's what's happening. The real estate market's not going to be any different. So, it's all in your mind what a dollar is worth. And as the dollar depreciates in value massively, just like the same thing with Bitcoin. Let me explain. It's just like the, exactly the same thing with Bitcoin. you got Bitcoin out there, and, you know, right now it's at $40,000. Well, there was a time when it was only at like 200 bucks. And people were saying, oh, that's an expensive Bitcoin because it had been at 60 bucks. And it went up to 200. And they were like, oh, it's expensive right now. But if you were to say that's an expensive Bitcoin right now at $200 Bitcoin, people would say, oh my gosh, that's cheap. Because now it's 40,000. And if you were to go to a period when Bitcoin was 68,000 and you were to say a $40,000 Bitcoin, people would say, that's a cheap Bitcoin. So it's all relative, and it's the same way with the dollar and its purchasing power. Right now, the dollar still has a significant amount of purchasing power, but it's not going to. And at a certain point, uh, it'll be down to where it's not purchasing a penny of what it's purchasing right now. And it's all in people's heads. People will, Then when it moves down to half of that, people will say, well, it was stronger back it's all relative it's all relative okay i'm getting that bug down a little bit i gotta move on here let's take a look at oil today 102 dollars it's up seven dollars and 58 cents which is a lot it's almost eight percent in one day move that's a big move for oil up let's take a look at the move index today at 100.57 so nothing to see here right now that's too high, though, guys. should be 40 if, this, if the economy was more stable. This is a sign. The fact that it's over 100 is a sign that we're in a economic disaster. I mean, the whole system is slowly... The whole world is slowly breaking apart. That's what's happening. Right before your eyes. Uh... We've got the exact same situation that was going on in World War II. You know, World War II, the, you know, the situation that I'm not going to talk about on here, but, and, except this time it's nuclear. Oh my gosh. Okay. More to look at here. Bonds today. We're looking at the bond yields falling today. 
Uh, we're looking at uh, a four basis point fall. Uh, no, uh, 2.7 basis point fall in the U.S. 10-year at 2.16. And a 1.7 basis point fall in the 30-year at 2.44. Still have that inversion between the 20 and 30-year. And uh, it looks like we're very close to an inversion between the 10 and the 7. And now they're raising that interest rate on the overnight rate. One quarter of of a basis of a point or 25 basis points and they're gonna I guess they're gonna do it again at the very next meeting and then the meeting after that the meeting after that the meeting after that the meeting after that ah uh, will the craziness ever end let's take a look at the dollar index today and it's coming down today it's 97.88 we got descending dollar today almost one percent off of the dollar today, which is quite a big move. Thank you guys for listening to my show. Like and subscribe and do all that kind of stuff. Hit the, hit that big thumbs button or whatever, thumbs up. Thank you very much for that. And uh, we're moving through some very hard times in life right now for everybody involved in the world. And we're creating these problems for ourselves. One of the reasons why we're creating these problems is we're, we look to our world leaders. It doesn't matter what country you're in. You look to your world leader to manage things, take care of things. That is the problem. Because you're putting the fox in charge of the hen house. The people... You want a system that runs good. The people should look out for all these problems themselves and take care of it themselves instead of giving charge over to any world leader. You're giving too much power to one man. You got a problem. You get one man in there. You elect him for life. You're basically giving all of your power over to him, everybody in the country. Well, he's going to take advantage of that. And he is going to, he's going to make a mess of you and your family and everything else. Because he's got so much power. But this is the way it's been done. Through history. To have a king or, a, or an emperor. And... The thing about it is, is this is the old way of doing things, and we're paying, we're going to pay the price big time for doing things the old-fashioned way. This is a modern world, this technological age, where everybody out there, we got computers now for crying out loud. We don't have to delegate authority to one individual. We can have the computer set up a system of justice, so that each and every person would have a voice rather than having their voices hushed because one individual wants to rule it all. That's the old that's the old way. That's the way it was done. But we're in the, that way is deadly. Deadly. Because we're in a modern age of technology where we have uh, weapon systems that can be developed that are absolutely devastating to humanity. And you give that charge to one person you got a problem a massive problem uh, whereas we're in an age of computer technology blockchain technology can make autonomous type governments that would run smoothly and efficiently and would give everybody in the kingdom a voice even the depressed ones the ones who are like lowest level would have a voice and be able to express their opinion freely without the threat of being purged from the system. Anyway, thank you guys for listening. We'll catch you guys in the next show. Bye-bye.